Hey, welcome back to The Country Hobbyist. And if you're here today to watch a professional pour a concrete hearth with uh, some molds and a nice stamp, you're in the wrong channel. Flip up, go to somebody else. However, if you're here to watch somebody struggle, laugh at, make fun of, and have an opinion about how they're doing this, stay with me. I'm going to go through this whole process of pouring a hearth for our fireplace. I'm going to jump right to this. I was quoted $1,800 to pour a 20 inch by 72 inch hearth for our, uh, our new fireplace that we've had done. And I thought, well, that's just an ignorant dollar amount. And I refused to pay $1,800 for, uh, for such an activity. And so I started doing the, the numbers and I thought, well, I'm not going to be free and I'm not going to be a hundred bucks, but I'm going to be able to build something that I want, take some pride in it and be way cheaper than $1,800. Where I'm at right now, from a dollar standpoint, I've got $200 in concrete. I've got $250 in molds and I've got some leftover two by fours. So let's add in another hundred bucks for miscellaneous. So I'm at 500 bucks. The mold I'm using today is a silicone mold. It's like 96 inches. Um, it is a, it's hard to tell, but it's a rock face mold. And what I've done is I've created a two by four uh, base for that to go in. And I'm gonna pour my concrete into it. So let me show you. So here's the current status. You can see I've started to get uh, this mold into here. Unfortunately, I do not have enough with the length that I need to cover uh, this whole area. So I thought what I would do it was I'd like the front to be all one solid piece and then this is just in the way I would have a seam right there and uh, right there as opposed to having a seam like up here where it originally was so what I'm gonna do is mark this I'm gonna cut this other one to length and uh, get it put in there and I'll do that for both sides so I've measured this to be right at 11 inches and uh, I've never cut this before so good luck. The one thing I do notice is that these edges here are, um, they match up really well with this edge here. So I'm going to cut kind of the ends off both sides to get this to fill in. I know it's kind of a waste of this mold because because I am going to cut from each side but I don't necessarily plan on going into full time business. Uh, using these the only other little project I thought that it might come in handy is when we do our steps uh, for our pool that we're going to build here in the next year or so That was kind of cool, actually. That's a real nice, clean cut right there, actually. More so than I thought it would be. And, oh, look. Too long. Okay, well I'm fairly happy with that. So the next step I'm going to do is put a run a bead of silicone across the back. So this will be up against the wall. Uh, so I just want a flat surface there. I'll put a piece of silicone or some silicone bead here. I'm going to level up some of these little holes in this uh, in this piece of wood just to. Uh, whew, 
Cause it a mess. Just to keep it flat on the bottom where I don't have a weird thing going on there. Um, I was trying to say before I lost complete control of my cog I want to <laughs> uh, if you're friends of mine you know why I just lost control right there by talking about losing control of my cog perverts you're all perverts what I don't want is to have this concrete to have funky uh down pieces in it causing it to not be level on the bottom so i'm just going to fill in some of these little rough spots on this piece of wood with some silicone caulk the other thing i was going to do was just put some caulk right here on this to try to make it be more of a natural um seam here like where it just kind of seems like it, it seems like it's a seam where it seems like it, where it appears to kind of come across as all just one uh, piece of rock uh, in that face and I'll do the other side as well and the last thing that I wanted to try to do today was uh because all this silicone's got to set up. But what I was wanting to do, <sighs> I'm thinking, and that maybe this is a dumb idea, but I'm gonna have to slide, I think we're gonna have to slide a bit of this flooring. So this is the flooring I'm gonna use. This is an old piece that is broke, so it's scrap. But what I'm thinking about doing is filling a channel all across the bottom here with silicone uh, that way it'll it'll match the contour of the um, rock face but then when I pour the concrete on top of it what that'll leave is the same height as my my flooring with the that the will have a lip that this will be able to slide under so we're going to try that and see how how dumb of an idea this turns out to be but uh, it could be genius level, or it could not be genius level. So naturally, as normal, my battery overheated on my camera. I wasn't paying attention. It shut down. I've got a thick layer of silicone all the way around. I need to at least let this cure for at least overnight to let that silicone set up. So maybe in the next couple days, we'll be ready to pour the concrete in here. Um, I'm going to let this just kind of mellow for a few days. And then we'll be prepared to do some concrete. I wanted to do a little test run to see what that edge would look like. And I just sharing that here. And what I learned on this test run, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but there's a lot of air bubbles here in this piece. So uh, two things. One, I poured this really wet. It had too much liquid in it. And two, uh, we really are going to have to tap this edge here. Um, after we put concrete in it to get rid of these air bubbles aside from that i think it looked pretty good we used a, a texture on the top i'll show that here and i'll show that here in a little bit as well on that texture piece but i'm fairly happy with this edging that that uh, this mold seemed to put together so it's been a few days because i've been really nervous about dumping 200 dollars worth of concrete in here and mixing up that uh and, and pouring that hearth and and uh, so I've been making up excuses. Oh, the weather's not right. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Today's the day. It's doomsday. But some cool things is I got this sweet hat. Look at this, dude. Look at that. That's a hat right there. So this is a countertop concrete. And it's just, uh, it's real fine grit. is dusty
So when it's done, what will you do? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you take it out and how do you put it on? Well, it just sits on the floor. How are you supposed to get the boys to not get in there? I was hoping Michael or you would keep them out of it. Especially Pete, Pongo. Well, oh. Just keep them from messing with it. piece that I wanted to add in here was just a binder of some mesh, screen mesh to help keep it from cracking. This is like called screening. Screening? I don't know. But it's just to see if you level across there, if you've got any high spots. And uh, it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more concrete. Sorry, my battery died as I was pouring or, or screening across here. I've got it really level. Um, and now what I need to do is just go around and pop these outsides. And what we're trying to do here is pop the air bubbles up out of this concrete. Especially around the edge. Remember I showed you that earlier. Remember I showed you earlier um, on the face how it had air bubbles in it. And what we're just trying to do is make sure we get, try to get as much of those knocked out as we can. So this concrete is wet. I poured it a little wet on purpose. Um, I think it looks good so far, but we just need to let it set up just for a little bit here. You can see how, how wet it is. Um, I'm not a concrete pourer, so don't criticize me on that, but we're gonna let this start to set up just a little bit before we start to try to make sure we take any ridges of it out. But for the most part, there's a little spot right there I want to fix. And maybe just some of these air bubbles that have come out from, from tapping the side in pretty good shape so far. These stamps are textured. Uh -huh. I'm talking to the camera. Oh. <laughs> so these stamps are textured and uh, we're pretty set up here uh, as far as our concrete goes. And it's pretty firm at this point. But I still had some water uh, from, the, from the concrete 
sweating out because in this format something I didn't really take into account was there's no additional moisture in the ground to help take uh, suck the moisture out from the bottom like if it was on a gravel or whatever um, in this case we're on wood and that wood's just kind of holding the concrete and its moisture it's not pulling any out to you know for itself so I've had a bit of an extended drying <clears throat> I've had a bit of an extended drying time just because of of that. All I'm really trying to do here is just add in some stone like texture to the top to mimic a bit of what the wall texture of that brook look, would look like. The liquid that I have in here is a release agent. Um, it smells like diesel fuel. But, so it's a petroleum based product and it's just a release agent for uh, this plastic to not stick to this concrete. I said plastic, I meant silicone or whatever material this is. trying to work this just a little bit to get a very specific look here. Uh, that look is to not look like a vein of a piece of human anatomy. Because <laughs> it's, it's got a bit of that going to it here. So it's really trying to sort that. The agent that I was using here was a Z release and, and this stuff, I, I don't think I mentioned it. it most of this come from Z countertop forms. Um, the stamps did, the dies did, but then I think this mold came from somebody else. Um, so I'm gonna let this finish up. I'm not gonna touch it for a couple of days. I'm gonna let it cure, I'm gonna let it harden I for a second thought that I had left the microphone off. That would have been fantastic. Let's kind of get a close-up view here of what that stamp looked like. So I'm really just trying to get like a rock textured look to this, similar to you know a stone face that we've got here on the rest of the fireplace. The next steps for this will be to dry, get it out of the form, and then uh, we've got some stains. <clears throat> Here in a few days, I'll fall back up. We'll go through this. Uh, I made a mess. As I was doing this, I made kind of a mess. But here in the next few days, after this is all dry and, and kind of finished, what we'll do is we'll get the form off. We'll start putting on some stain, and I'll, uh, I'll walk through that process too. Again, I've never done this before. This is not a how-to professional doing it video. This is me as an amateur saying, hey, if you want to try these projects, uh, they're frustrating. They're kind of hard to do. But if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so it, it's sat overnight. And I think it's ready to pop the format. I've already unscrewed all the deals. <laughs> unscrewed all the deals. I've already, <laughs> I've already, it's early. I'm sorry. I've already taken out all the screws.
Hey, look, there's the silicone coming out from right there. That's what we were really trying to accomplish with this was leave like an edge right there. I can still see, I know I can't really get it right now. I can still see some air bubbles here in the side of this face, but as far as like the mold and setup goes, I'm fairly happy. There's a, a little bit of a lip in some places, like right here. But I think, yeah, even just rubbing my hand over it, it's just kind of superficial. Um, we could probably just knock that down with some sandpaper. I mean, that's, I can't really get a great view right now because it's dark, but super happy with this so far. I'm just really excited to get this, uh, this step out of the way. This was a, a big stress point on getting this whole project done. Hold on one second. I just realized what I probably look like. Is that better with the hat? So I'm just excited to get a oh, selfie angle. Just really excited to get this kind of finished up here and staying in the next two or three days and really get it set in place. I feel like huge milestone here on getting uh, you know this fireplace finished up and getting this hearth uh, really knocked out this this turned out way nicer than what I had actually even anticipated uh, very very happy with the results and like, like I've mentioned like probably three or four times now uh, this isn't this isn't my full time I I am not a professional at this and I feel like with a few little tweaks that I think if you were working on it more you can understand how to get like the air bubbles out better Maybe like one of those uh, vibrating uh, concrete tools. Vibrating concrete tools would <laughs> help get some of the air pockets out. But I think we can maybe make up a little bit of concrete and just kind of fill those in and hide them. And uh, really clean this up where it looks nice. Need to kind of wipe it down with some water. Get a little bit of a sanding pad. And, hit some of these rough edges, but I think we're going to be ready to stain this in two or three days once it gets good and cured. Impatient me uh, also wanted to show like that lip and why we put that lip in because it makes it look like this did exactly what I was hoping for, that I could slide some of this flooring just right up underneath there. It just makes it look like that stone sitting right on top of the floor. This way I don't have to put a funky piece of trim or anything. I just make it look like it's sitting right on that floor. That floor is still going to be floating. Uh, that, that silicone did a very nice job. It didn't stick at all. I pulled it out real easily from underneath that piece of rock. It's very nice.